This is the Oculus. If you search New York Transportation Hub, you will get the Oculus. If you search Westfield Mall, you will get the Oculus. If you search the World Trade Center Station, you will get the Oculus. If you search Dormammu, you will get the Oculus. Obviously, there's some ambiguity here, but it makes sense. The Oculus is a recently built structure in New York City, and the complex it sits on, which is the World Trade Center, is not even entirely finished with its construction. The World Trade Center is located in Lower Manhattan. It is a complex made up of six skyscrapers, a performing arts center, a transportation hub, a memorial, a museum, and an elevated park with a church. Prior to 9-11, the original World Trade Center complex had a somewhat similar layout with seven buildings. Two of them were the famous Twin Towers. On September 11, 2001, the entire complex was destroyed after two aircrafts crashed into both the Twin Towers, causing them to ultimately collapse and destroy the surrounding buildings. Ever since, New York has been rebuilding the complex. Today, the current World Trade Center is a mix of completed and incomplete structures. Starting with the tallest building in New York City, one World Trade Center was originally named the Freedom Tower in 2003, then renamed in 2009 to its current name, One World Trade Center. The building itself is 1,368 feet tall, which is the height of the original Twin Tower. Plus the antenna of 408 feet makes it stand to a total of 1,776 feet. As it happens, 1776 is the year the U.S. Declaration of Independence was signed. With this height, it is the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere and the sixth tallest in the world. The observatory is on floors 100 to 102. Here, you can get a 360-degree view of the city. On a clear day, you can see up to 45 miles away. Here's a tip for you. The best time to go is early evenings. During this time, all the tourists have exhausted their legs for the day and are probably grabbing dinner somewhere, in which case, the lines are practically non-existent, especially in the summers. Since then, the sun doesn't set till about 8 p.m. The National 9-11 Memorial consists of two reflecting pools that occupy the footprints of the original Twin Towers that were destroyed. The title of the memorial is Reflecting Absence. The design was chosen via a competition that attracted 5,201 submissions from 63 countries. The winning design was by Michael Arad and Peter Walker. The pools are 30 feet deep. After the 30-foot drop, the water drops another 20 feet before disappearing. The idea being is that, quote, although water flows into the voids, they can never be filled. The area of each pool is about an acre. That's equivalent to two and a half hockey rinks. The trees chosen to landscape the area around the pool are swamp white oak trees, which are native to all three crash sites, New York City, Arlington, where the Pentagon is, and Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Along the sides of the pools are engraved 2,983 names. These include the names of both the victims of 9-11 and the victims of the 1993 bombing that also happened at the World Trade Center. If you ever see a white flower on one of the names, that's because a volunteer puts a flower on a name that has a birthday that day. On the anniversary of 9-11, the names of the victims are read in a commemorative ceremony during the day. In the evening, you will be able to see two beams of light in the Manhattan skyline, which are set up at the Battery Park garage just south of the memorial. This is a public art installation titled Tribute in Light that is on from dusk till dawn every year on September 11. Don't be deceived by the seemingly small structure for a museum. Above ground, you may only see this much of the building, but below ground, the entire museum actually takes up both footprints of the original Twin Towers. The contents of the museum is all about the day of September 11 and the 1993 bombing. It tells the story of the events leading up to September 11 and a minute-by-minute -minute immersive storytelling of the day itself, as well as the aftermath. It has first-hand testimonials, historical records, and over 70,000 artifacts. Visitors have come from more than 175 countries. You can allocate anywhere from two hours to half a day going through this museum.
Liberty Park is an elevated public park just south of the memorial. It highlights the sphere, a bronze sculpture that survived the attacks during 9-11. The sculpture was designed by Fritz Koenig to symbolize world peace through world trade. It originally stood at the plaza in between the Twin Towers. Miraculously, it survived the events of 9-11. Today, it is installed in Liberty Park, unrestored so you can still see the damages it had sustained. Directly to the east of Liberty Park is St. Nicholas Church, which is currently finishing construction. Its original building used to stand where Liberty Park is now, but was destroyed during 9-11. The design is by Santiago Calatrava, who also designed the Oculus, which we will get to later. The design was inspired by the domed Byzantine churches in Istanbul, specifically the Hagia Sophia and the Church of the Holy Savior in Kora, also known as the Kariye Mosque. The completed commercial buildings surrounding the memorial are buildings 7, 3, and 4. These are mostly office spaces with some retail areas. Buildings 2 and 5 will also be commercial buildings, but both have yet to be completed. The Performing Arts Center is also currently under construction. When complete, it will house three theaters for music, theater, and dance. These will have movable walls to transform into one large theater with an estimated capacity of 1,200 attendees. And now we circle back to this white structure. Officially called the World Trade Center Transportation Hub, it's a very popular tourist attraction. The white structure itself is what many refer to as the Oculus. But underground, the entire transportation hub has a lot larger area. The structure is both a transportation hub and part of the Westfield Shopping Mall. Below street level, you will have access to retail spaces that connect to other buildings in the complex. If you are ever in the city during the holidays, the atrium becomes a holiday market. As a transportation hub, you can access several lines on the New York City subway. On the very bottom level is a terminal station to the PATH. The PATH is a rapid transit system between New Jersey and New York City. Prior to 9-11, there was already an underground mall at the World Trade Center. It spanned almost the entire complex. This new shopping mall and PATH station takes up the area around the memorial to make room for the underground museum. The Oculus was designed by the earlier mentioned architect engineer Santiago Calatrava whose work on large-scale structures is undeniably distinct. His original concept for the Oculus was, quote, a bird being released from a child's hand. We've covered a general overview of the complex to serve as an introduction to give you a sense of orientation and a good idea of how to navigate. Whether you're an architectural buff, a history buff, or simply a curious traveler, the World Trade Center is a must-see when visiting New York City. The events of 9-11 redefined the city and affected the entire world. I invite you to visit Ground Zero to commemorate one of the most defining moments in history. As always, thank you so much for watching. The best way to support my channel is by liking this video and subscribing. This goes a long way and it keeps the content coming. Until next time, happy New Yorking!